die Jimmy John's Workers Union. The primary basis. The Jimmy John's Workers Union is based on the workers who work both in the stores and the deliveries. Excluded are the managers as they have the power to hire and fire workers, which is contrary to the IWW statutes. In addition, the organizing of the IWW focuses on building counterpower from below. The majority of the Jimmy John's Workers Union were delivery drivers and a smaller number of workers in the stores. One member reports about the reasons for organizing. We decided on Jimmy John's as an organizing target because we thought the uh, uh, working conditions were kind of bottom of the barrel for um, food service. It's like minimum wage work and, it's, and for delivery type jobs, it's like the low, it was the lowest wages you could get in town for any delivery type job too. Um, and we also had a bunch of, we knew we had contact, pre-existing contacts at the Jimmy John stores. So that's why we chose to chose it as a target. The secondary bases. The secondary base was the community supporters and the general public. In addition, the workers of the fast food sector nationwide were named. The opponent was the management of Jimmy John's. The problems. The three biggest problems. Within the Jimmy John's Workers' Union, the three biggest problems were identified as first, the low pay. Workers at Jimmy John's earn the minimum wage. At the beginning of the campaign, it was $6.25 in the state of Minneapolis, and in 2016, it was $7.75. Even after many of years of service in the company, the chance of a pay rise is small. Fellow workers who deliver sandwiches described that they receive between 10 to 20 US dollars in tips, while workers in the shop receive on average less tips. Number two, the lack of security. These uncertainties relate to the number of hours worked, which affects the level of wages. They also include the fact that there is no health insurance for all workers. In addition, the delivery drivers use their private bicycles and the speed at which Jimmy John's advertises the arrival of sandwiches tempts employees to drive very dangerously. And the fact that the average winter temperatures in the region Minneapolis-St. Paul range from 3 to 10 degrees minus Celsius was also described as a major problem by fellow workers. Even in the case of accidents, Jimmy John's depends on the arbitrariness of the supervisor whether at least the repair of the bikes is paid for. This means that they are not even insured while working on the bike. You occasionally you get a nice manager who will like pay to like, will give you like tubes or something, you get a flat or pay to like get your bike fixed. The interviewees also reported that the campaigns tend to become smaller each year in winter in terms of reduced participation in, com in committee meetings and also the frequency of the actions. So, in a sense, the process of organizing begins again in spring. The low pay and more insecure working conditions also mean that many workers have two or three jobs. Of the workers, according to their fellow workers, more people who work in the shops have several jobs, while the delivery drivers, also because they earn considerably more money, have only one job. Problem 3. The lack of respect. This problem is also mentioned by the fellow workers at Starbucks and Burgerville. It is an often mentioned point in trade union disputes in the recent years. The form of disrespectful treatment can vary. In the case of the JJWU, it refers to both the speed of work and the tone of communication between superiors and workers. A worker describes one of the examples. Sure, we, there was a harassment um, issue in one of the stores where we had a union member who was trying to organize there um, and he was pretty wild. Um, he was like a controversial figure in the store, but he was putting a lot into it and he had some friends there and he was working with one of his friends on a shift and like got into it about the way they cut a sandwich and <laughs> the manager like punched him on the shoulder or something and he got real offended and you like they they called a work stoppage anyway, um, and like stopped working and like called a we started calling people up to go down to the store, 
And like the one dude was like went outside. Andy, I remember went outside and was like standing outside with his apron on, his arms crossed at the front door. <laughs> like, it turned into this big ordeal, and uh, got fired. And they fired the manager, who they later rehired, I think. Um, but that kind of like I don't know. That was a big action for us at the time, and like gave us a lot of energy that we hadn't had. Kind of like brought life back into the campaign at the time. The top three benefits of membership. The fellow workers named at first a social network that supports each other financially, socially, emotionally and in struggles. Collective support in case of problems was also mentioned. That is number two, which here refers to, among other things, to support in cases of harassment by bosses. In the course of the organizing and several actions, such as the march to the boss, bosses became noticeably silent. Such actions led to more respect for the workers. The last thing mentioned was the assumption of shifts, which is partly important because many workers have to take on two or three jobs to survive and their coordination is difficult. With the support of their fellow workers, this excessive demand was easier to cope with. The unique selling proposition. A simple, clear message that explains why we are different and why it is worthwhile to, to participate. The main motto of the JJWU is a variation of the company's slogan Subs so fast you'll freak, which refers to the fast delivery of sandwiches. In contrast, the Jimmy John's Workers Union advertises with the slogan Wages so low you'll freak. The slogan We got your back was also popular. The slogan We got your back was also popular. These slogans were found on merchandising, publications, etc. As strategies, the fellow workers cited the election for official recognition of the union through an election that must be applied for at the National Labor Relations Board. However, narrowly lost in 2011. This strategy was not pursued further thereafter. Direct actions to change various problems were described as the most frequently used strategy, such as the march on the boss, where workers handed over their demands unannounced to the boss by means of a petition threatening further actions. We did small actions in stores uh, geared around uh, single-issue grievances usually. So we did, a, we did a big march on the boss and phone zap over firing. Um, we did like a scheduling action over hours in one store. We did something around a bike cart. Um, it was a store that didn't have a bike cart. Uh, stuff like that, I don't know, small petitions in one store about harassment, stuff like we did one of those. In this context, they also refer to actions in which customers in the shop offered their support and exerted pressure on the employer. At the same time, however, the fellow workers shared the view that there was hardly anything more powerful than three or more fellow workers marching directly into the boss's office unannounced and making demands. This form of direct action is one of the most frequently used forms of action of the IWW in recent years. It was also used by the Starbucks Workers Union and the Burgerville Workers Union. A strong network among people in combination with public pressure was also named as a strategy. As the fluctuation among the workers was very high, which makes it very difficult to build stable relationships, this is very remarkable. As the interviewees reported, the organizers of the IWW were themselves the longest working workers in the store. I mean, I think the fact that we were able to have a relatively stable organization of people at many stores uh, with an incredibly high turnover workplace, with quite strong relationships with lots of our coworkers. Like, we, we knew personally between the organizing committee, at least at high points, like, we, you know, we had solid relationships with a large percentage of our coworkers in a very high turnover workplace. Um, I think that was a real, that was, I think that's impressive. Um. The place of conflict was largely the stores themselves, since it was there that the power of the workers over the production process was most powerful. The competitive advantage cannot simply be fought by an enemy actor or opponent. 
A competitive advantage that cannot be fought by an opponent or hostile actor is that the fellow workers had res resistant and mil militant organizers and activities. By this, we mean activists who can engage in various strategies in forms of action and who are able to counter the action of management with sufficient will. The fellow workers were largely very sure that they would win the campaign and push through all demands against the will of the bosses. Instead, however, successes did not occur clearly as planned. Firstly, because partial successes were often achieved, and secondly, because it is never clear from the actions of the employers whether they introduced the changes due to pressure from the workers. With this concession, they would otherwise admit their own defeat. Consequently, it is also difficult to assess whether one has really won. Rather, it requires the workers to interpret the practice of the company. I mean, everybody goes into it thinking, like, we're going to fucking win. And we're going to, like, win all these things. And we're going to make the bosses life hell. And they're going to have to give us all these things we want. And almost never, that never, almost never happens. Like, sometimes you win some things, but you usually never win what you're shooting for. And so people get disillusioned and they think, oh, I'm a failure. Or this thing doesn't work. And then they quit. Like, that happens all the time like i know somebody in the union right now he's like i suck at organizing i'm a total failure i'm like no actually this has been one of the more successful campaigns you've ever had like you're actually a really good organizer like don't yeah. be so hard on yourself one of the side effects is also that those involved in the jjwu could not judge for themselves whether they were they were successful as a consequence as the above quote makes clear fellow workers withdrew from the campaign with resignation. Another advantage of the Jimmy Jones Workers' Union was that over the years they had the support of several souls, meaning organizers who were specifically hired to support the campaigns. Even the fellow workers interviewed here all stated that they were employed by Jimmy Jones because of the campaign. Over the years, the company has assumed that white workers might tend to be salts and has subjected them to a more extensive selection process. No, no, it was before the firings when they were expecting all of us to salt, like they were expecting people to salt in. So when they would have, if you were white and you got, and you applied, you had to go through like three interviews. You had to interview a, a man, general manager, area manager, and then you had to interview Bob. The assessment of the fellow workers is that Jimmy Johns was clear about the demographic composition of the bike messenger scene in the Twin Cities and that the IWW organizers are essentially made up of this demographic group. So the company was well aware of the social relationships. As a third competitive advantage, the fellow workers mentioned their social networks in Minneapolis, St. Paul, especially within the bike messenger scene which offered support in the forms of actions, also existed as a pool of potential salaries in the background. The costs, long-term and short-term financing. The Jimmy Johns Workers' Union was financed by the local branch of the IWW. Membership fees of the JJWU, as well as its own fundraising events, which generated between $10,000 and $15,000 in total. As in the Starbucks Workers' Union, the Jimmy Johns Workers' Union was also a low-resource model whose financial resources could hardly have been exhausted. The key indicators, the key activities that are measured. In the Worker Association Canvas, the key performance indicators stand for the success criteria to a certain extent. For the Jimmy Johns Workers' Union, the number of workers participating in actions was a criteria. They also considered the number of committee members, the number of improved working conditions, the number of union members and intensity of actions as criteria of success. The assumption with these criteria was that the power among the workers increased with the level of these factors. Firstly, because support for actions can also help to avert attempts to split the company And secondly, because more workers become aware of their power and demand their interests, which is the goal of building class consciousness. The basic idea here is that as long as workers have to sell their labor, there will be problems at work. And a revolutionary process is if enough workers organize themselves, the means of production would be transferred into the hands of the workers, 
for which purpose the fellow workers would not only have to be aware of their power, but also use it. The channels. The ways to reach members, allies and the rest of the base. The Jimmy John's Workers' Union channels were mainly one-on-one -on -one conversations among fellow workers. Meetings, SMS, Facebook, leaflets and posters. Also social events like parties, etc. These channels were chosen for their practicability, they were easily accessible to fellow workers and corresponded to their everyday habits. The core competencies. Three things we have to be world class in. Here, actions at the workplace is number one. They were mentioned above all, which mainly refer to direct actions that were intended to shift the balance of power in favor of the workers. These direct actions were carried out under the control of the workers themselves. For this reason, they are also regarded as the most powerful actions since they intervene in the production process itself. The fellow workers also mentioned internal democratic decision making, that's number two, which is by no means a matter of course in the context of trade unions and everyday work. The control over the own organizing process is a declared goal of the IWW since its foundation, because for, for a new world the corresponding people need skills and have to gain decision making powers to organize a new form of society. One of the core points of the solidarity unionism of the IWW is to build solidarity relations that strengthen the power of the class. This is also reflected in the Jimmy John's Workers' Union. The predominant social relations, that is number three, in capitalist societies are above all organized in such a way that they serve general competition and the exploitation for capital. In a communist society, new social relations are therefore essential for living together in solidarity. As a fourth core competence, the interview partners named the distinctive pre press work and press coverage of the action of the Jimmy John's Workers' Union, which, like the Starbucks Workers' Union, was able to challenge the difference between the company propaganda and the reality of workers' lives in favor of the Jimmy John's Workers' Union. The membership and multiplier structure. How do we define membership? How are decisions made? Which criteria define membership? What is the structure? As members of the Jimmy John's Workers' Union, the participants were counted in the campaign which was carried out through the sharing of work tasks. This resulted in the fact 12 IWW members, but at times up to 100 people were Jimmy John's Workers' Union members. So workers could simply join. The focus was less on formal membership but rather on the willingness to be a little active for the work of the Jimmy John's Workers' Union. Definitely in shop and drivers, there's definitely a divide there. For the most part, almost all the drivers are white. Some are not, but more, like 99% of them are white. Also 99% of them are men. In shop, it's like half are white, half are black. Depending on the store, like my store it's majority black, but some stores it's mixed. Um, and depending, I would say, the gender breakdown among in-shoppers could be as much as 50-50 split. My store has historically been majority female, so it's majority black female, majority white male on the other side. Another fellow worker disagrees with this statement as he believes that this is a company-wide reality. It is possible that this reality varies from store to store. In this context, one colleague also noted that it depends on who is transported in the stores. In addition, there was a high density of superiors on workers. In this context, there seems to be a concentration of black workers in stores with black bosses and white workers more in stores with white bosses. Another technique was that in the course of the campaign, Jimmy Johns assumed that white workers were more likely to be sold as some of the main Jimmy Johns Workers Union organizers were themselves employed as delivery drivers and had good contacts in the local bike scene. Companies seem to assume that accordingly white workers were more likely to be members of the IWW. Part B. Successes and failures of the Jimmy John's Workers' Union. The aim of IWW campaigns is the immediate improvement of working conditions and the development of skills of involved workers in order to create a world based on needs in the long run. 
Criteria for success is the improvement of the conditions of struggle and living and the training of organizers. It could also be formulated in the language of critical psychology that the goal of the IWW is a generalized capacity to act and campaigns must be measured by whether they have done so. The difficulty is to operationalize this, but at least successes and defeats can be presented. In this context, successes refer both to the results obtained by the employer and to the organizing processes and division of labor described by the interview partners. The interviewees reported that they had a solid agenda at meetings, both in terms of the content of committee meetings and organizing. It is by no means a matter of course that meetings are quick and effective because it is also possible to get tangled up in aimless discussions. These lead to decisions not being taken collectively, but only by those who stay longest at the meetings and thus assert their interests. And then we'd take a break and then we'd like come back and do all of our business. Um, and we, we were pretty like good about keeping them short, the meetings short. But I think that especially the, the first half of it was like really good for bringing people into the meetings. Um, because it like people are always nervous and then they have to like talk right away and then we get to take a break and talk more just like informally. Yeah. And then the like structured format of the meeting wasn't over or wasn't scary anymore and we were able to just like bust through a meeting after that. The fellow workers further reported that they were able to minimize arbitrary dismissals during the campaign as a point system has now been introduced under which workers can get six points for alleged violations of work instructions and then be fired. To show up without notice means four points, to call in sick counts one point and to be late counts a half point. Fellow workers also reported a wage increase of one US dollar per hour on the night shift after midnight in response to the rumor that they would not show up for work on New Year's Eve as already described under the point mechanism. With the start of the Jimmy John's campaign, the local branch of the IWW had a strong influence, which increased from about 15 people to about 70 members today. This led to more capacity in terms of organizing and enabled the local group to become one of the most su successful local groups in North America. Another success is that they managed to build a stable organization in a workplace with high turnover. It exists today over a period of nine years. On the other hand, the election for recognition as an official trade union by an NLRB election, which was lost by 78 votes to 85, was probably one of the biggest defeats, leaving much frustration among the workers. However, the defeat of this NLRB election is not uncommon in the US, as even larger unions regularly lose this process since during the election campaigns employers have much more resources and regularly engage union-busting companies. This strategy is therefore rejected by large parts of the IWW. In addition, there have been difficulties, such as the seasons in Minneapolis-St. Paul, where low temperatures have always led to a slump in activity in winter. The reason for this is the decrease in common social activities among the workers in their free time. Therefore, the organizing work had to start repeatedly in spring. Formerly active workers had to be reactivated. In states like California, with a higher average temperature, this might be different. In the course of the interview, fellow workers also reported that they were surprised by the dismissal of six of their main organizers in the course of the campaign for paid sick days in March 2011 where posters were hung up in half the city with two identical pictures of Jimmy John's sandwiches. One showed a sandwich made by a sick worker and the other made by a healthy worker. One colleague's assessment of this is that they had too little support from the workforce for this. At that moment, there was too little discussion among the fellow workers to bring together a large um, mass of workers behind this dispute. At the same time, it later became a nationwide legal regulation. <laughs>